So, hello and uh, welcome to this session about, you're welcome, <laughs> about game music. And my name is Jonne Valtonen and I've been composing game music, I think, something for 25 years now. Which was sort of came to a shock to me actually, to realize that I've been doing this quite a long time. I've been doing on and off this game music thing and written a lot of other music as well for theater and some movies and then I've written a lot of arrangements, uh, mainly actually uh, game music arrangements for symphony orchestras which have been played around the, well, around the world really, in London Symphony Orchestra and Tokyo Symphony and all around. But, so this session is about uh, the structure of it is um, I'm going to go through a bit of my history, how I came to be uh, as a game music composer, I guess, and then I'm going to go a go through a couple of projects a bit more clearer. I, I think I'm going to keep this quite free, so if you have any questions, just cut me out and ask me, and I'm happy to change the direction and give a bit more insight. And of course, after, the, after this lecture, I'm, you can ask me anything and I'll try to answer to my best knowledge. But yeah, so it's... Um, I started quite young, actually, write, writing music. Uh, I was involved in this demo scene culture. I don't know if you're familiar about it, but uh, this assembly event that's now very prophetic about esports and and uh, gathering of people like-minded people that sort of play games and meet up uh, but before it used to be like this huge competition platform for people who were sort of writing code writing music to this elect electronic music mo mostly and uh, drawing graf graphics and these people sort of joined up together and formed groups and they sort of did like a, they did this kind of music video real-time demos back then the computers were really slow so everybody was like competing against e each other who has the best like code fastest code and show like the design of the demo who has the best demos and shots and uh, and this is basically my teens and my youth and how sort of I spent my time back then with fellow, well, it was quite nerdy, I guess, but I loved it and quite a few others as well. So I, I think I have a picture of it uh, here. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum. So, uh, let's see, no, 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 this is... Hmm, interesting. Oh. Okay, I'll, I, I think I'll show this. Um, oh, so, I'll just Google it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been preparing very well for this, but it's, it's okay. So it seems. Just to get, just to give you an idea, this is basically this is from, uh, I, I think this is from the old Hardball Arena. And as you can see, the computers, uh, this is the sort of the composition, and it, it's, I, I think it was something like three days. Everybody brought their own computers there. And uh, as you can see, the screens are not flat. Back then, they were actually huge. And uh, it, it took quite a lot of logistics for a small child, like a 14 year old kid, to bring a huge computer and uh, and this monitor there, and then you went there, and uh, what you're not seeing here is that there was a big screen. Let me see. Oops. Okay, here's a good one, I think. So there is a big screen which usually held the combos there, so it was uh, like... Uh, you could say that uh, well, all the graphicians sort of competed against each other, all the musicians competed each against each other, and all these groups formed from these codes and that the coding they were sort of competing each other. Okay. 
So this is basically what I did. And after people got a bit older, after they, after something like 20 or something, they sort of thought what they should do, sort of they, they should go to work and such. And quite a few of them actually uh, formed uh, game companies. Like Remedy Entertainment has quite a heavy roots on, 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 uh, on this event. There were other events as this as well, like in Denmark there was the party called, and there were other places in Europe which we actually traveled and visited and, and competed against there, each other. But uh, I was in this group called Future Crew and uh, it was, it sort of got, got quite famous and quite a lot of people sort of still recognize it, I guess. We did a couple of demos that won quite a few of these competitions and because of that the people who formed these game companies so remembered me because I, I did the music for these demos and I also won some awards and they thought that who, who, who would do music for our games and then they thought Let, let's just ask you on and he probably would be cool if he'd do it and I'd be happy of course I was happy to do it so basically this is somewhere around yeah Okay, so this is my history. I, I was in this feature crew from 92 to onward, and we did these demos. And then the first demos that, uh, no, sorry, the first games that were done by this freshly formed Remedy Entertainment was Death Rally, and I brought the music for that. And then House Mark also, well, they weren't that much people in, in demo scene, but there were a lot of, still, they were closely following it. And Housemark, I, I remember it was like two game companies here in Finland. They've sort of combined. There was uh, Terramark and uh, Bloodhouse, so they formed as this Housemark. So, and the first game they did was this Alien Incident. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna show you a bit how the music was done back then. I mean, it was very like uh, chaotic, the whole process. Naturally, we were uh, in our 20s, way too excited. Nobody had any like experience like organizing. Basically, people, they were on these demo groups, there were people who organized and like we sent letters and back then there was BBSs, you had to call phone to these different BBSs and that's how the demos got spread. There wasn't the internet, you know, so, so that's how it was done and uh, uh, I don't know why I was bringing that up, up what, but, but uh, so there was some organization skills there and, but it was still quite chaotic and of course, people were partying and <laughs> well, you're on your 20s and sort of doing your thing, you're loving and, and when I was doing this uh, music for these two games, I just realized that, wow, I, I really could be making like a living out of this. Like, a, I, I mean, it, obviously the, it wasn't much, but still there was this, this kind of revelation for me that I could actually be doing this as a profession. And, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna show a bit about this, these games. Yeah, and please, if you have any questions, just ask away. Okay, so this is basically. I I found this kind of old uh, way of uh, <laughs> how I did mu music back then. It was it's. I mean, this is sort of quite a quite a similar replica of uh, I used Scream Tracker uh, two and three actually back then. And these, these are called trackers. And the thing is that all the uh, instruments, the music and the sample data is saved on one file. And uh, so basically you can download the song and, it, and you need a player to play this file and then it sort of plays as it should be. And the good, point, the good thing is that it's, they are very small. I mean, these, these sizes. Uh, back then, this size issue was really a thing. We literally fought over kilos, like kilo bytes, like I, I need to have like 10 more bytes for this sample so that it does sound like a saxophone or something because otherwise it will sound like a sine wave and then the graphics, graphics were like, no, I really need like some kilobytes, I mean, I really need those pixels there and coders were like, no, you can't have anything and everybody was just like fighting over, over this. So. So having this tracker thing was pretty cool because then you, it, it, I mean, MP3 files take quite a lot of, actually back then you couldn't play MP3 files because it took way too much power from the computer. 
So this is basically, or all right, I'm going to just show you how it's. So this is one track from the uh, death rally I did earlier. Let's see. Okay, my alias was Purple Motion back then. Yeah, don't ask. I picked it when I was like 14 or something. I loved Deep Purple, so yeah, that's the reason. So basically, you have like, you have samples here. Oops. Okay, I don't know if you can hear it. These samples, then you have sort of rudimentary waveform. You can see it, and it's a bit like that. And then you have this uh, Excel, Excel style. Let's see. If, oh, this Excel style editing, where you can just put a note there, and uh, then there's the octave and what instrument, and then there's an effect, what you can sort of put there. And uh, basic. Now I'm just channel playing channel one, like slowly. Okay, as you can see, the loop points aren't perfect because it was pretty impossible to do. I mean, those usually you have to fit like the whole soundtrack to a sample size that now nowadays takes something like a ba bass drum size. You have to fit everything there back then. So, and this is basically how it sounded like. This is a track just like from the death rally. I'll show you later. Oh, oops. Yeah, I was 19. Yeah, but this is really cool. Everybody, we were like, in Remedy Entertainment, it was Samuel Syvehoka's basement, literally, we were there, and uh, the toilet kept breaking up, and it was literally sometimes not nice, but, but it was, yeah, good memory. So basically, just, uh, on this, uh, this death rally, they asked, uh, they are different kind of levels, and uh, they asked me to just, like, uh, accentuate the, the feeling of the, of the track. I mean, this is for this futuristic track, so it should sort of sound a bit futuristic. They are like channel tracks and and different kind of tracks. I'll, I'll just show you the game. So, yeah. But this is basically how I worked, and it's very slow and painful process, and uh, and like the constant battle with the bytes and not well, no kilobytes. I mean, that would have been like legendary to get the kilobyte. But uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah. Mm, let me see, I have uh, links there. Oops. Did you use a keyboard or piano or something to get the ideas? Or? Yeah, actually I, I did have like a piano, so I did play it a bit. I mean, I was studying in a music opisto. Yeah. And I was also in conservatory for some years, so I sort of, I didn't have any knowledge about music theory or anything. I just played all the normal like Mozart and what you play when you're what in your teens. <coughs> so, so this was, I mean, I, I loved uh, electronic music like John Michel Jarre and, and Jan Hammer and whatnot, all, all these kind of electronic music pioneers and uh, Vangelis obviously, I played on the soundtrack was like a, like a, I don't know, like a Bible for quite a lot of us, so. Okay, but the, this is basically the game. And this is the first game for Remedy Entertainment. So you have the menu, menu music there, just oh, like. Right. Oh, it had also some vocals, which was really cool, and samples. Oh, and there's also like small, small music snips when it's root. because you didn't back then you didn't know how fast the computer was, so loading the track would actually would take something like one second or a minute. So I just brought a minute music for that loading this. Yeah, this was really cool back then. I just, it had this kind of pseudo. 3D element going on on top of it. And, oh, and this is a jungle track, so you have this kind of jungle kind of vibe there. And, uh, yeah. 
I, I think it was received quite well actually back in the day. And this is still the time when you're sending like selling discs and uh, I don't think CD-ROMs were still not like available. I think. Yeah, let's see if there is something more interesting. Okay. And there's... Yeah, you get back there and then you have like a shop and store. This was a sort of quite a, quite a normal way of how games were back then. I mean, uh, there was a lot of cool games in Amiga and that's... I, I, we always, like PC people always check what's happening in Amiga because the, at the beginning PC was way out of like league with trying to match with the graphics and all this because it had separate processors for it, for graphics and music I think and PC just had one one big processor which was doing all, all the things so yeah okay all right this was that, that was that and yeah it was a great learning experience I guess and uh, th there wasn't really like there wasn't any I, there wasn't really any designers or anything I just I just I just I, I just did stuff and everybody were happy with it so so it, there wasn't any producers involved in there and this is I, I'm, I'm just gonna check show you the alien incident by house mark as well this is the main intro yeah and this is actually the first time I used I, I from this death rally uh, money I I was able to buy one synthesizer there was a, it was a tough thing to choose because uh, if, if I'd buy a, like a mopo or a synthesizer and because everybody you know as your teens you should have a mopo <laughs> and uh, well I bought a synthesizer and yeah. but I'm happy I did actually but this is actually this is this is the one uh, intro sequence for this game uh, it, it was this kind of LucasArts uh, click and point game I, I think it was the first one in, in Finland and the last one I don't know if they were ever done after this but it was pretty interesting as well to do so yeah you have this Halloween night and crazy professor is doing an experiment and uh, It was horrible to synchronize this video because I just got the video and I didn't, I didn't have any idea. Okay, all right, so. Now look here, Ben. This is a historical moment. So yeah, I had to uh, synchronize all these hit points by, I just sort of... Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, I just uh, mm, made a long uh, uh, audio file with a, like a symbol hits, and I just had to like always render to get to, like just manually try to just guess the places. And when I was was getting closer and closer, and I I had a really slow PC back then, so I I had to like wait for 15 minutes always it to render it. And then I just realized that one of the hit points was like 0 0.01 seconds off. So I had to change that and then something else changed. And I, I think I tried to find the hit points for this, for this thing quite a few days, actually. So I was pretty happy when I could have finally got everything. So I set down. Yeah, it has a very, like this LucasArts feel to it. And that's how, what they did. Yeah, and I, I used, uh, I think I used Logic Audio for this, uh, to control the synthesizer. And I had no idea about mixing and anything, it's just, just coming right straight out from the synthesizer actually. And I used all the reverbs and such from that. CGI, whoa, that was cool, back then. Okay, but basically you, you get the idea. I'm, I'm just gonna check if there is like... Ah, there is. Okay, all right, cool. So, and the rest of the music I did with this tracker thing, because again, space was an issue and uh, 
I, we only did this like this. So this is the game. The, the professor gets kidnapped by aliens and then basically you're just going on there. There's a Commodore 64 on there, so you can use it to activate the elevator actually. So that's and all of the music, they actually, they had a music director for this, so, sort of. And uh, that was the first time I was involved with somebody else about designing the music, what, what the scenes should be. And we were going with this sneaky kind of something might happen or something has happened. And this is, has, this is some like mis mystery in this house. So, and this is, you, the, the music is done with trackers, so like I showed. And this is a point and click, so you like like that. So you point and then click and gather things and something happens. So it's a puzzle game, basically. So. Yeah, okay, so this was the second one. And I, I think the biggest thing was to be involved with the music director, so. Uh, and it was actually quite refreshing to sort of bounce ideas with somebody who's also thinking about the whole game concept and the design, so. Because uh, because usually I've been just my I mean with the demo scene and these days I've been just doing all deciding everything by myself so it's nice to have like a opinion that sort of ed edu educated opinion about things. Okay, so yeah, those were the two games and they were they were done ninety uh, seven. Okay, I, I have to pick up the speed. It seems. Uh, Okay, so yeah, after that, I, uh, at that point actually, I, I realized that uh, all this tracker music and this, uh, this other kind of people of music, if, if, if you say it was passing by, the computers got more powerful and they, CD-ROMs came, all the, you could fit a game to a CD-ROM and you could actually use like audio directly from the CD. So space wasn't an issue anymore and it started to show that that like 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 real music was like real music like how you would think today is getting recorded they started to appear, appear in games and uh, at at that point i mean i was studying this music music opista and, and i realized that i really need to like study more about writing music and composition and such because i'm i'm gonna get lost if I just stick with these old things, they sort of became old things at, at, at the time. Like in, those, in this five year gap from 96 to 2000 and maybe two, I guess. The last sort of this kind of tracker project I did was for this uh, Game Boy Advance called Project S11. And it was, it was a cool project as well because it was the last tracker project and I really put all my know-how into them. And, and uh, I heard later that actually uh, Nintendo was so impressed for the music, so they, they something they changed something in the hardware too, so it would really like kick the whole soundtrack. So I'm just gonna play the uh, play a bit of the music, so you can have an idea how how it sounds the the, the thing, and then I'm gonna show the game a bit. Oops, oh. there. Oh, there, okay, all right. Oh, there's the sc screenshot of the game. So it's a, this kind of shoot, shoot, shoot them up game. And this is the lava level. So again, all the levels were different and I was asked to do like different emphasis on different levels. And this was the only sort of direction I got from the, from the game company was that this level is like, it has lava and mud in it and, and make it exciting. And that's like, all right, <laughs> I will try. And uh, this is the thing, so what I did. Oops, sorry. <laughs> this is sort of half tracker, half coding kind of gig. You had to sort of incorporate it. And really, this machine is really limited, so trying to get anything out of it, it was quite hard. Uh, Basically, you have like three, uh, four-channel 
the polyphony. One channel is like a noise gate, so basically you have one channel of noise, and which usually takes by the like the effects from the game takes that channel, and uh, then you have like uh, 32 byte sample channels. So basically you can just draw waveforms and two oscillators, which one of the oscillators have like LFO. So, so yeah, keeping it exciting and. Uh, going forward. I, I guess the, the thing that's been like constant in all these years is that it needs to go forward, have energy and go forward. And uh, if you have like melodies, they usually take your concentration from the game. So that's the reason I'm introducing melodies here a bit later so that you're already in the game and yeah. okay, this is, I, yeah, this is sort of, I, I was sort of Higher, upper volume. And I was a huge fan of, and still am uh, actually, of John Williams, so I was also studying his music, so there's some things in there. And. Uh, yeah, so that's it. I'm just gonna show the game fast and, and let's move forward. So this is basically a this sized like a screen and oh okay so we are in for a commercials. Yeah. So this one effect is taking the uh, one channel, so basically the music is basically three channel polyphony. And it's like that, so you know. There's a, there's a yeah, different uh, weapon set. Like very old old school shooter. Oh, this is actually a different too. Okay. okay, so you get the idea. But this was the last of these kind of old things that I did. And uh, also one thing that's been, I, I've noticed throughout the years, that sometimes you write for some scene or something and then it gets used, like in this, this place, it, it's, you, some, something else gets used instead. So, you know, you have to be quite extra involved and careful. I mean, if you have like some kind of uh, keys and these kind of things you're sort of planning out, some, you, you can really get, lost in there if, if you if you're not careful sometimes okay all right uh, so yeah after that I, I realized that uh, the music was getting a bit more serious than that and uh, and uh, I think the first uh, like outcast was was a game that the first one that uses uh, like a Moscow Symphony Orchestra on or like a real proper soundtrack with uh, Lenny Moore who was uh, I, I think he, I think he wrote for m movies and television on that stage, and the music was absolutely fabulous and incorporated really well. And at that point, I think it was 2000, it was released. I realized that I really need to study this. Like it, it, things will go to this, like this soundtrack thing, and I'd be really left out if, if I'm gonna stick with the Game Boy Advance things because it was basically failing at that time. So uh, I got to study in in Tampere. Uh, composition in uh, <coughs> Polytechnic and uh, I studied there and uh, I started to get kicks because of my demo scene history for uh, writing for uh, game music for symphony orchestras. It was a new back then and uh, the first one I think we did was Chris Hulspec's music we wrote for... Uh, uh, yeah, I think it was uh, Royal Stockholm Film Audimony Orchestra was the first one to write music. It was pretty cool because I was studying like orchestration and then symphony, like Royal Stockholm Symphony Orchestra was <laughs> playing them. It's like an absolute luxury and they are, they are absolutely great people as well. So 
that was the time I was sort of studying and I didn't do that much game music. I, yeah, I did game music, but I was taking somebody else's game music and incorporating it to the symphony orchestra places and uh, it really took off. All, all the orchestras wanted to do it. It was something new and they got like young people there and like people were really excited about it and uh, so everybody wanted at that time to have those like arrangements. I, I think they still do. I, I haven't done them for some time but yeah. So I took a bit of a break from, from writing for games but uh, the reason why I originally asked to do these arrangements was that uh, basically this uh, producer, Thomas Pöcker, who was doing also these concept, concept concepts, was a fan of my old music, like from this uh, tracker scene and electronic music. And he knew me from there and he asked me to write for some string uh, orchestrations before I was, before I was uh, in the school. And, uh, uh, they got recorded in uh, in Prague with the string orchestra, and at the recording place, I really realized it was before 2003. I really realized that I really need more jobs to do it because uh, I, I had no idea. <laughs> now I ha now I have some idea, but uh, yeah. All right, it was pretty cool. We went all all the different places, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, Thomas actually became my manager and agent and started to look. Uh, game music composition job for me as well. So, and he was uh, really liked uh, like Japanese culture. In him, he has a Japanese wife and such. So they know the culture well and they can operate with their culture as well. So, I started to get like orchestration gigs from there. Orchestration meaning basically it meant that they sent me an MP3 file and they asked me to so that it would sound great with an with an orchestra. And, so basically it was transcribing an orchestration and not too much arranging. There is a bit of a difference in arranging and orchestrating. Orchestrating is basically you, you don't change the music too much. And arranging is that you sort of, let's just, you need to arrange if you have like a, like a crazy music with a lot of different melodies and you have only like a vi one violin, then you have to sort of scale it down. Or if you have one violin and explode it to an orchestra, then you sort of have to arrange and come up with all the other elements there to support the original thing. So orchestration is more about effectiveness and how you are transcribing the music for the, for the thing. But because I guess because they were happy with my uh, orchestrations, I also started to get some uh, game gigs from there, made basically from Namco and uh, uh, Gundam I don't know if you know it, it's a very famous series, to like this anime series in, in Japan. It's been there something like 20 or 40 years already. So, And they start, they, they've they been doing games for that series as well. Basically it's about big robots that fight. And it's always cool, you know. <laughs> and uh, uh, they were quite, uh, first of all, it, they were very secretive. They didn't give, usually you get this kind of some kind of story lies and uh, concept graphic and some some versions of game to play so that you have some kind of idea the world you're trying to immerse the player in but with this uh, uh, sometimes you get got only like proud uh, young knife soldiers marching into battle and so that's so how fast so I'm usually uh, then you ask and th then they would send like a temp track a bit so that um, you sort of get an idea of the mood that they want. Temp track means that you take another track from some other, like some other from a movie, you take a piece of music and then you just introduce that the music would be like this. So then you sort of have an idea how the music should go. And uh, what's more important, I think, is that you get the tempo of the music, how fast it is, because <coughs> that sort of affects quite a lot of things. And yeah, at that point, all the sample library orchestras have come uh, and uh, pieces are powerful enough and uh, you, you can really sort of, sort of do this kind of very believable soundtrack music with using uh, uh, like DAWs, digital audio workstations and uh, like these samplers that have like their massive libraries, you could have like multiple libraries of string sounds and you sort of 
you just knit it together with different synths, uh, with these different sounds to make one coherent, like let's just say, one coherent uh, melody line. And uh, it's a it's a craft of its own. I, I think it's called MIDI production or production or audio production. How do you say? It? I, I think. And uh, quite a lot of uh, nowadays in movie, movie music, there is a lot of a lot of people who are especially oriented to doing that. Like for composers, they are doing uh, these kind of versions for the directors, so they can decide if they like the music or not, and if they want changes. And that's also a bit of the reason why some some of the music sounds a bit of the same because when you compose with samples you compose with samples first so you compose so that it sounds good with the with with the samples you choose so usually it's very percussive and uh, and writing like these kind of long melody lines and like beautiful melody lines that like takes time to develop and have a, like like proper meaning it's really hard to do with sample libraries and that also might be reason. I don't know. I'm just speculating. I probably am wrong, but but that's also reason. I I think one of the reason why why the music is like that a bit today. But with a uh, um, on this uh, place where I was studying composition, I met this guy called Jani Laaksonen, who's very much he also studied composition and choir really, uh, choir, choir conductor in choir conducting and singing and oh, well, he, I, I think he has. He's done everything, <laughs> but uh, he agreed when I got this uh, Namco gig. He agreed to uh, write uh, this kind of sampler library part for me. So I basically wrote everything with Sibelius, which is uh, like this not notation software, and uh, and he made it sounding like a Hollywood track. And it's, I mean, you can lose pretty quickly yourself in it because usually if you, let's just say you have a melody line like dee, 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 that means that you already have to choose like three or four different instruments. And then you start stacking the instrument. So just for this, it takes a lot of space to do. And then suddenly you just, at least for me, I, I keep start to lose the point of the whole composition because it looks like a, this kind of mosaic thing that everything is sort of spread around. So I thought that it would be cool that I can ri just write on notes and focus those and then Jani would do the audio production and he would sort of went with it. And that's one of the best decisions I've done because I did this house mark golf tee it up there. I did all the sample programming and this stuff myself. Uh, I'm actually going to show you a piece of that as well. So. Uh, and it was quite, it, it's very slow and it's hard, it's, well, uh, maybe it's my problem, but I, I tend to do it like that. But yeah, maybe I'll, I'll just go with this house mark golf tee it up first. So this is like a cute uh, golf game. I was asked to do the music for it. Uh, I was ha very happy because it's been some time before I, I last pro worked for the house mark and it was very interesting. Uh, I think th at this point I was uh, asking at the game about the concept and such, and they were very generous providing all the data and pictures and and what should be. And uh, 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 but the, the distributor, uh, I think it's Accor Accolade. I think uh, sent their uh, suggestions what the music should be for the, like this uh, menu and to have this kind of general feel of the game. So they sent me di three different things that I could sort of, or me and the company could sort of choose. And uh, this is like a cute golf game. That's like the basic concept of it. And this is the first demo. Th th these are basically 10 tracks, basically. So this is the first one. Yeah, and it's real, like real instruments playing, so sounds good, very good production there. Okay, that was the first one, this very like, like a agent kind of feel, okay? So then the next one. This 
was quite a cool thing. Okay, I think you get the idea. This, this was the second one. So it's quite different actually, very different than the first one and then the third one. This is the one I picked. But it's pretty cool because I was all, already uh, studying composition so checking all the elements what are in this in this piece is pretty easy. I mean it's Lydian and there's sort of elements coming and all the modulations are like thirds and the, and the tempo and everything. Although the the tempo we chose is quite slower than this one but okay so yeah okay and this is a real real orchestra so it's really hard to compete with that but uh, uh, this is sort of what I came up with. So like very similar kind of elements. And this is samples. So there, there's a long lead in when the music actually starts. So this, I think this is a good idea to do because usually when you go to a game, you almost immediately go like play the game and you don't listen, you really listen to this piece. So if it straight away comes in, usually it's a bit, uh, it starts to get awkward at some point. So if you want to listen to the piece, you can listen to it. But if you want to go directly to the game and not be like bothered too much, you can do that as well. And this is the main theme I wrote here. And this theme I'm pretty much using in all of the music because uh, so that it sort of gives this clue and uh, clue to the whole whole game in a way, even or somewhere else. Okay, so this is and this is the intermission. This also has like the same. I'm gonna show you a video of this game as well. So, so this is a golf course and it hovers to this kind of over the golf course and shows the vastness of everything. Yeah, it's a lot of Ravel there, so but Ravel is cool, so you know, why not? And then you have the theme there. Just augmented theme, so everything sort of just keeps reminding a bit about it. And it's sort of giving the familiarity of the game, but not being too intrusive, I, I think, I hope. Okay, and then when finally when you finished all the, the whole game, you have this fanfare and you have the same elements that you have on the menu on this little bit of there. check the game if you want to but there's also one thing that people don't maybe realize when you're sort of writing for a game that you actually need to write a lot of uh, like material you don't really sort of count this music maybe and that's jingles and these kind of small snippets I remember before this one Namco game I, I think it was a football game like this arcade game you play with your friends and they, they had something like 40 uh, fanfares in it and I was writing and how many ways you can do the dee 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 and it was like after that after I wrote all the funfairs like took me like a I don't know how many days but you know, I, I thought that if I ever write one more fanfare I'm, I'm gonna go out and in a killing spree it was like <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty hectic but yeah but but also that uh, sort of I I also had to write jingles there is uh, like this one jingle series of jingles indicate how well you do how well you hit the ball so you have the 
a perfect hit here. There. And then it gradually the hits get worse. So they are sort of they are sort of indicating sort of and that's the verse you don't really hit it well. So and then there's all kind of general kind of hit things to do. And I'm also sort of using the orchestra sounds as well, just to have like inter integrity with the with the music. Oh, and the, yeah, please don't mind about my English. It's very bad, easier. Like what? But okay. So it's like that. That was like really bad and uh, and shorter version of it, and very bad. And very. Good. And when you hit water, it's like... And sometimes you really need to write like a lot of these as well, sort of. Especially on like these more India games, you, uh, you sometimes even you have to write... Oh, I've written quite a lot of uh, sound effects. I'm, I'm not doing it anymore. Usually they have like different departments on game companies to sort of handle it. There's like people who are doing the music and people who are doing the sound effects and then maybe people who are sort of coding it. Now there's the interactivity late, lately has come up so so you sort of have to be aware of these elements as well. I mean the computer is sort of you just provide like different instrument tra tracks and the computer is depending what you do on the game it's sort of mixing the game while it goes. I did this uh, City Skylines and there's like three layers there is one big 10 minute layer, it, it, it's a city building game, so everything takes time, it, it's a slow paced game. And all these kind of, uh, I think there's five of these 10 minute main musics, and then they sort of move around how well you're doing, so you have the best version, like one and the worst version. But after, after that there is also this kind of, when you zoom and pan out and watch your city from the sky, there is one another layer which gets uh, fade in, faded in and uh, this gives you this kind of card mode. It's the same music but it's it's very different still so you get a lot of variation in this and then there is also things when things go really bad like you are, you're flooding and something happens then it sort of uh, moves there. So I think this gives you some kind of interactivity and it doesn't get repetitive that well much because you sort of moving in this axis and this axis and so it's sort of it, it's the same but it's not the same and of course in like like Remedius games it's crazy how they're taking the interactivity literally like mixing the music how you're playing the game I was in one of these I, I, I don't know if you can find it on YouTube I really suggest if, if you're interested to check it out because it's really interesting how they are doing it and they are uh, like code there's like really hardcore audio coders they are doing their thing and all the uh, sound designers there are cool. Well, every I mean, House Marco is really cool as well. And, but that's I just saw the representation what they did, and it was really cool. I haven't done that much, so this interactivity is mostly been like this very, very like this, uh, not as hardcore maybe as they are doing. But still, I, I think you can do pretty nice things with just by like fading with different tracks and and crossfading and get a lot of variety because the thing is that you need variety in games because sometimes you're not a, like you don't necessarily know if you're staying on one location let's say like like a minute or a, like 20 minutes or something so it's like it's very interesting to have this no well, anyway check it out so okay yeah and just to check this game this is Activision, yes, was the yeah. A sadistic code is online. All right, good for him. Or her. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. We also did the sound effects, actually. Uh, my friend, uh, who 
we have a studio in Turku. He did all the sound effects for this game, and he was putting on the on the on the recording and doing foley, and it was pretty fun. So this is the game. Very casual and relaxed and not too like demanding. And there you have the there you have the jingles indicating how, how well it's doing and then you have the jingle how well you did. I mean how well you hit and how well you're sort of in the end of the of the course. Ah that's a perfect hit. Really hard to do a sound of wind, by the way. It always sounds like you're um, in a storm. How how do you do a gentle breeze? I mean, it's, this is like the this is like a normal day outside. This what you're hearing here, and it sounds like it's it's like. All right, then you have the jingle. Yeah, well done. And then you have this kind of hit up, but well, usually it goes to this, let's say, guard mode to source the, to source the screen, and the, this intermission, what I played earlier. All right, okay. And basically this is the game. And uh, it was pretty fun to do. They had quite a good directions, they were quite involved, and I got very good feedback all, all the time. And uh, one, one big thing was that the menu piece was first, it was too fast. and. Uh, I had to slow it down, so I had to rewrite it a bit because it had to be slowed down quite a lot. So, but the, but the first one I did still went into this high score. So, yeah, all right, okay, okay. So the next one I, I did with this Jani Laaksonen for this Gundam game uh, was uh, <coughs> let's see, yeah, 2008 and 2000. Uh, 14. 2014. I was like I said. I was. I got the gig through this Thomas Becker, who was my agent, and uh, it was pretty, pretty in interesting. And always, it was also that you had to wait for the feedback, like because of the time difference, you had to wait for the like like a day. And when the deadline is getting cl closer, waiting f waiting a day is like quite <laughs> horror. So it was quite interesting. But we got through it and. It seems they were happy and we were happy as well. So, and this is the. I'm just gonna show the game actually first. I think, yeah. It's about uh, these huge robots fighting, and I, I think you can get the idea from. Mm, hmm, here, okay. I'll get it from here. This is the last boss, basically, and uh, the music is quite low on volume, but sound effects are very heavy on volume. This is the last boss, I think, and it was supposed to be that, like, have this almost like this horror element to it. I think it's, I think the idea was this kind of ghost chip idea that you don't really know who's there and and you have to fight it. And again, this piece, again, should like reflect this horror element a bit and keep the intensity up and uh, just to have this forward feeling going all the time. And because there is so many, much uh, effects on this game, I also made the music like this very like sectional and choppy and effect-like so that the music would blend in with the actual effects but still give this kind of more immersion to this game. And it's pretty funny because there's a different sections on this game. You don't sort of 
your mind makes the connection that somehow the, even that it's not planned, it sounds like it's planned. Just because things are happening, so you're just connecting things with different things. So that was a pretty interesting thing to learn in this game as well. I mean, this sounds like it's interactive, but it's, it's not. I mean, yeah, it's, it's placed on this track, but it's not like... Okay, so I, I think you get the idea. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna play a bit of the music and then show how I did write, wrote all the music and... And so on. So yeah. Oops. Wrong. Wrong directory. Okay, so this is the track we did with Yanni. What we... What I showed you just there. Here you can... Here it's a bit better, I think. big hits because otherwise you don't really you don't really hear it on the game so that's the why I'm like over exaggerating of everything here. Uh, and our uh, when we studied composition me my and Yanis uh, it was actually more like contemporary composing, so this is very like familiar sort of aesthetic for us. And that's the main theme of the game. Yeah, and it's just going forward and by choosing keys and sections and small alterations on like meter and uh, And then you have the similar kind of section done on the beginning, so you have can have a good loop point in there because it's looping. Yeah, and that's that's basically the music. And. Uh, this was the first time I did this with Yanni. Actually, 2008 was the first time I did it with Yanni. And this, uh, this, I think this method for us provided pretty nice because he likes to tinker with all the sample things, which for me is a pain. And uh, he likes it. At least he says he likes it. I don't know. <laughs> I have to interview him again. But uh, it's pretty nice because in this way I can sort of keep, I, I can visually see the music a bit. Oh, sorry bit better what, than what it's like. Let me see if I can zoom it out there. So this is like basically like this is how we do the music. This is if you know about uh, how the scores are usually laid out, you have you have like woodwinds up there, there, and then you have uh, brass there, percussion there, and then you have strings here, and then piano and harp and whatnot here. But the thing is that I've done here is that I've already sort of a bit split these uh, tracks to different things, so Yanni doesn't have to do so much work. So it's like, uh, if I can. So I already have like violin staccato track, which is like a short violin thing, and then I have violin trill because it's a different always. It's always a different instrument, so it helps him to just. It's very easy for me to do, but very time-taking for Yanni. And then I have like a lot of hits, strings, part of pizzicatos and all these kind of things here going on. And this is basically how it sounds in my uh, notation software. software. Oh, sorry. Okay, so I need to say, sorry. Um,
Yeah, this is the same track, how it sounds here. Good thing writing with, with this kind of with samples is that you really don't need to worry about like grass breathing or staying like being alive and not worrying that they are blow their brains out, which is sometimes or doesn't you don't have to worry about being fingerings and well you don't have to worry about people, let's just say like that. So it's it's really messy, it's not like edited or anything, it's just part data for Yanni to sort of get into this uh, digital workstation and then he can sort of add these kind of more realistic sounds to it. But this is also very good enough was for the producers to get some kind of an idea how the music should be. And, uh, Basically, this is a score that just sort of edited as a data for for Yanni. Okay, and this is how lately we've been doing all our game music. I mean, if there needs to be like sample stuff, but the the last project I'm going to show you is uh, I wrote a uh, soundtrack for Albion online game, and it it was they used the Brax uh, film film harmonic orchestra, which is basically I guess. Prague Symphony Orchestra, I think a lot of the players are from there. And uh, it's this... Uh, uh, it's this like multiplayer MMORPG, what's that like? You know, people log in and then they join guilds and then they fight against each other. Let, let me just say, see if I see. I was supposed to show you the game, but I lost the damn codes, and the codes are in my, my home, and I can't yeah, get there. But I hope this will do it. Let's play Albion online. Okay. Hey. Tämä on about you. Muotiverkko kaukasi. Olipa kyseessä elegant, Sorry. tyylikäs, urheilullinen tai rento. Inspiroidu ja löydä muotia, joka on valittu juuri sinua varten. Nyt, about you. Oh. All right, hey everyone, Wanderba right here, and welcome to Albion on a, Online. I don't do it here. Okay, so basically you, you choose a character here. Uh, how you want to enter the world, okay. and you have different okay. attributes, and you can sort of change how you look and okay, etc. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is one reason why I don't play. Okay. And this is how it looks, how the game looks. They they were going for this old school feel a bit, so you have this uh, view from high above, and uh, the graphics have some old school elements and such. Uh, uh, General. And basically, uh, you, you are playing this character, and there's a lot of other Actually, real people you're interacting with, and I want to see what, what the to trading, and maybe no, farming, and you can pretty much do what you want there. Or, or, and then you can join a guild, so or, and uh, attack other guilds, and, and uh, then you get more well, money anyway, and fame, and... Uh, going to go on a journey. So, I don't know too much about this game. Oh. So what they wanted was that there's there's like different locations in this game. They wanted different, again, different places attenuated, and they wanted to use the symphony orchestra for this thing because, uh, like said, with samples you always sort of you always write samples first, but with the orchestra because they can do anything, you sort of well maybe not everything, but quite a lot of different things. No, you can do more, more of this kind of longer line emotional things more believable and easier. I mean, it takes a lot of time and effort to do it with samples. So, so let's see if there is like different locations here. So you have the outlands and then you have cities, different cities which you can go and you, you can attack anybody in, in a city and then you can do trading and whatnot. And just chat with people or whatnot. So here you can see it, you have some. So, huh. what this person has. Okay. So. Don't know or understand. Okay. 
and all these are people they choose their aliases and you can sort of you can talk to them and ask them to join a guild or just can I like what pull not? up the map? Okay, oh, that's a map of the city. Yeah. So we have the repair station. Right. But they, they did quite a long beta testing for this game, and I got to play this game quite a lot before it was released, like officially released. And so I could myself spot all the places that would have like music, and of course the directors and other people on the on the on the team. They sort of decided uh, we had like one once a week we had this kind of meetup on Zoom. They are German based game company developer and uh, uh, we were talking about the direction and what the music should be and we actually talked quite a lot about tempos and you know the, what's your heartbeat and these kind of things they sort of gives you like feeling of uh, relaxedness or like something is very active uh, and such so this is basically the game okay and uh, it was pretty cool we got to do it on Rudolfilm Hall. It's it's very very nice location, very reverby hall, but very nice still. And uh, <coughs> I'm just gonna play some some pieces for you. <laughs> okay, maybe sort of a bit bit of a letdown to this end, but yeah. but uh, yeah. So again, in here, I, I all, also I wrote the main theme, which was sort of I, I did it very early on on the beta beta test phase. And they liked it, so they wanted to have it on the end game as well. So that's how it went. I also think it, it's a pretty nice theme. And I've sort of uh, g g given hints and clues of the theme throughout, like pretty much like all the places. In some places it's more obvious, and some places it's not. But I think brain is such a weird thing that it does, even though that you don't really realize something, it does pick up the things that you're not like noticing. Okay, I have to tell this, we did this very inter interesting thing because we were doing, with, with my friend, we were doing a lot of these game music arrangements for these symphony orchestras and uh, VDR uh, played a lot of them and they were streaming the concerts always live, so on YouTube. So people were like uh, commenting live on, on the music. So you could pretty much see what's happening. And he, had, he has this one, one uh, battle music on the end and a uh, medley sort of mad battle music that has different battle music and at one point uh, the battle music is going on and on the on the middle uh, like voices or something the the incoming battle music uh, sort of gets introduced played there you really have to focus and know your stuff so that you can get it out from there you don't really get it out from there but uh, and after that comes the actual game the, the battle music so so uh, it's pretty interesting because when you follow what, what people were writing there, they were like just hearing their favorite melodies and yeah, cool and cool. And at that point they were like talk, talking that it would be really cool if this piece would come up like then. And when it came up they were like, yeah, great. But the funny thing is that people, they, don't sort of, they didn't sort of realize it perhaps that well. And uh, so that sort of encouraged me to also, also for this game and well, it's a, it's an old trick. It's an old like as long as there is music, I think it's been used that way. But that was like a literal confirmation for me to do it, and that's how I, I'm using this theme like throughout all all of the pieces, like very like there. They are almost in all of the pieces. So this is the main theme. Oops. Okay. Well, this is nice. Okay, so you too busy to eat this. And this is the main thing when you get to the menu. Again, it's, it introduces the theme. I'm just gonna go straight into the menu. To the main theme, I mean. Very like heroic new continent, basically Albion. Yeah, it's like it's like 
new place to start, a new frontier and this kind of excitement was wanted for this team. And very clear theme, just to, to have it introduced to everyone. Well, if you're interested, you can hear the, listen to the whole soundtrack on, on Spotify or YouTube, but that's basically it. And then, uh, uh, when you, you, you can buy your own ice, uh, island on this game, and you can throw all your stuff there and farm and raise cows and milk them and whatnot. So, so the thing is that I took this main, main theme and just augmented it, it's like four times as, as long, and it, to have to have the same theme but have like this really relaxed safe place to be kind of feel for us okay music maybe so this is the same thing but it's augmented so long that you don't necessarily realize that it's the same thing, but it's actually it's exactly the same thing. Just to have this like a hug and you're in a safe place, don't worry. Weekly reviews with the game company. Uh, I always send them the like the not Sibelius uh, note per for per per versions. I mean, they obviously Symphony Orchestra is gonna sound different and play I, with a lot more emotion. It's very dead and such, but they were happy to sort of comment on the on those uh, previews, and uh, we got to go forward. I guess it's, it's a good time to end this here. I mean, uh, they just uh, asked me to do a, like a more tracks. We did all the city teams for different cities, so more like focus teams. <coughs> you can also, if you want to check it out, it's uh, Albion Online Lands Awakened on Spotify or YouTube. You, you can yeah, listen to it there. And uh, yeah, that's it. Any questions? Maybe some closing words, maybe then. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like I said, I've been doing this for 25 years, and when I was born, there isn't even there wasn't even like this concept of game music around. So I've been growing up and watching it change, and watching computers and games change and change, and and uh, a lot of like they have a lot of communities and on on games and a lot of players and esports is a big thing that's also what's happening on assembly they are still organizing assembly event twice or once a year and 
there isn't any like competitions that much anymore about coding and such because there isn't any more restrictions. Although the, uh, uh, us a bit older people are still competing with like Commodore 64 and they have their like, own category for these old machines and it's pretty it's crazy what they can pull from there. Like every year you th think that you can see every year it's like this is not possible with this computer and still they are doing like every every year they are doing this kind of thing so it's pretty crazy and interesting especially if you so know those things but uh, yeah I mean like like I said there are some things that have sort of <coughs> been the same and uh, this kind of uh, th now the only limit is basically your imagination and uh, and the budget I guess <laughs> budget maybe limits a bit more and and the whole interactivity is coming and how it sort of it doesn't you just have to think about the music a bit differently. It's just not as linear as, as before and it's not a biggie, it's just to adjust to it. And uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty nice to be involved in this for such a long time. L lately I've been writing uh, my own concert music and going through <coughs> towards that and haven't done that much game music anymore, but I'm still following quite a lot. And yeah, I have some projects that I'm sort of thinking if I'd do it. Usually there are really cool people there and it's sort of it's nice to be around with people. Usually when you're composing it's 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 quite a lonely job. So once a week to have like a contact with somebody it's it's always a plus. <laughs> okay. But yeah, that's it, I guess. Thank you.